So this one's gonna be about being empathetic, having empathy, and also finding the right words, as well as passive aggression. These are gonna be the topics for today, but more after the intro. And I clearly honestly need my anti echo blank. And with that being said, hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. And I am really happy to record these episodes because I've done something different today. We're not going to go through articles just a tiny bit because I've went through a few articles beforehand. I've got a little bit of knowledge. I'm still going to read something, but I've highlighted some parts that are going to be extremely important and or that are the important parts of these articles. And this is what we're going to do today. All the necessary links should be down in the description. So if you are in need of something, it should be down in the description. But if there is something that you are in need of, please hit me up on social media. I'm going to be replying as quickly as I can, which is probably going to be not really a long time. So yeah, knowing what to say is I think indeed something that not a lot of people know and or this is a skill that a lot of people not have, unfortunately. I do believe that it is having something to do with being empathetic and knowing how other people are feeling and knowing how or maybe what they be thinking about, what their life might be like and all those things. Because if you clearly notice, and this is now the point, if you notice or if you are able to notice that somebody is in a bad mood, that somebody is maybe feeling something or that what you are willing to say at this point in time maybe is not going to be the best thing to say, then please don't say it. If you can notice that, then this is now the point because a lot of people somehow don't notice that or seem to not notice that or maybe aren't empathetic enough. And or there's something else, but I'm going to just talk about it later. Understanding that, I guess, is, is truly not easy. Understanding somebody else is truly not easy. Understanding yourself actually as well is really not that easy. The thing is, I think it is very important because... If you're not able to do that, you're probably going to be in a position or you're going to be in a situation where you're going to say something to somebody that might not be the best thing to say. And I think you can notice that by their body posture, by their gestures, and also by their, maybe by their mimics as well. You know, if they're just really looking angry and whatnot, then it's probably not going to be something of a good thing if you're just telling them that they're shit and that they did something wrong and whatnot and or something else. You know, it still depends on how you know this person and how good you know this person and if it is a friend or not, if it is a stranger or not. But yeah, it, it is really not easy. And if you're not able to do so, then it is clearly just you shouldn't be ashamed of that. You know, it, this is not really that bad because you can learn it. And I think you can learn it by just stepping into the shoes of other people, by caring about other people, by thinking about other people, by just maybe taking your time and really thinking about those people. Think and somehow assume how they might be feeling, what they might be willing to hear, what they maybe don't want to hear at this point in time or in this certain moment, and then just decide what you're going to say. Because... I mean, I'm seeing it and it happened to me as well in terms of just people saying something to me and then I feel like, well, it isn't, I think, the best point of time right now to say something like that to me. And I guess, of course, you just need context. I think context in this point of time or in this situation is, is very important and it is also crucial because if you know that, for example, somebody talked to somebody else and they just, I don't know, they just had an argument and whatnot, then it's probably not good to also have an argument with this person by saying something that might be quote-unquote controversial, some sort of. It might not be that good. You can talk about it later or you can talk about it the next day. But as I said, it does totally come up to the person. You know, if you know that this person is very sensitive, is it actually sensitive? And or that this person just doesn't really like when you're saying certain things things, then please don't do it. And I understand, and this is what I what I just wanted to say before, there is going to be a decision you're having to make between having the pleasure of maybe saying something funny or maybe saying something that is going to be satisfying for you, which is pleasure for me, and doing the right thing and not saying that and not pissing this particular person off and or just letting this per particular person feel even worse. It is really something to think about because I've seen it. I've seen that, of course, there is some kind of pleasure or satisfaction that you might be having by pointing something out for somebody um, that they did wrong. Most often, a lot of people are really not talking about these things that people did great, unfortunately. 
So please also consider that. Please also consider pointing out way more things that somebody did good, that somebody is wearing something cool, that somebody just, some somebody and something that's good. In any combination there is, point it out. Just do it. You know, you're gonna make this person's day. You're gonna make this person's life better. You're gonna make this person fucking happy by pointing those things out. But we are rarely seeing that. At least I'm rarely seeing that in my community and the people that I'm, um, I don't want to say hanging out with, but just in school, basically. I'm not seeing that often in school, but I'm doing that really often. If I'm noticing that someone is wearing something cool, then I'm gonna fucking point that out. It is something that I've really tried to, and I'm not just I'm not acting like, okay, I'm so good and whatnot. There is a lot of shit that I have to work on. But uh, it is really something that I consciously was aware of and then also consciously decided to do that. I'm actually pointing out cool things. I'm giving the compliments. I'm saying to people that they are wearing cool stuff. Most often, you know, it still also depends on the person. You know, if this is a person that I'm just talking relatively often to, then I'm just gonna throw that fucking compliment. You know, this is not a lot of work. This is not something that, I don't know, I don't give a fuck about that. But if it is a person that I'm not really often talking to, then I guess it might not necessarily be the case that I'm gonna do that. And of course, there are also various different ways of how you can present or say or tell a compliment. You can be like active. As I'm just thinking about it, there's an active way and there's a, pass a passive way. And maybe there's just a lot of other ways, but the active way would be like, okay, the shoes that you're wearing, they're just a fucking amazing. I really like them. And or the passive way might be something like, well, I would also just really like to have those shoes, which suggests or which lets the other person assume that the shoes are actually pretty cool or you like those shoes. And not being like, wow, fucking amazing when somebody's drawing something, you know, by not just actually putting out, well, what you're drawing there is really cool, but by being like, well, fuck, man, you're just really doing a great job or you're just really putting it over the top of whatever. You know what I mean. I know that you know what I mean. But yeah, there are two articles that I've actually found that are somehow related to that since I really believe it is something that's truly important to point out and truly important to talk about. But yeah, so it's just loading. I don't know why it is loading. And as you can see, there is my highlighted parts. Um, all the links to the articles are going to be down in the description. I've actually seeded it or sedated, citation, sedation, whatever, um, correctly through a plugin that I found and also the highlighting thing is a plugin and it's pretty cool. I know it works really, really fine. I think it's pretty amazing just because I've, I've always had the thing that I'm searching for certain parts of an article that I found before and then in the episode I didn't find them, which is something that's pretty fucked up and pretty shitty, but you know, it is what it is. So if you write okay, in answer to a question, a millennial and Gen Z colleagues may think you're mad at them. Which is something that, that I actually feel as well about. If somebody writes to me, okay, without any smiles, without any kind of additional thing, because I'm sometimes also writing okay with like 700 Ks and 700 Os, which also, at least at my point of view, sounds way, way, way nicer. But if somebody's writing you back, okay, then I really assume that this person is pissed or that this person is just not really happy about something that maybe I did or something that happened in his or her life and all those things. Like, it is pretty interesting. It really honestly is. But the funny thing is, it is all actually only saying yes. Whether it is KK or OK, OK, or whatever, OK, exclamation mark, whatever it might be, it is only saying yes, basically. As they say, you know, as they write, in this article and it has been also part of a New York Times article from uh, or by, is there actually something? No, unfortunately not, but from the column work friend in which readers write in with, uh, in with work-related dilemmas and a millennial writer answers them. So in this week's column, a Gen, Gen X, I'm sorry, Gen X correspondent asked about the following. I have been informed by my millennial and Gen Z co-workers that the new thing I'm supposed to type is KK to write OK or K, and they will tell me, is to be passive aggressive or imply that I would like the recipient to drop that. So if you write K, or I'm sorry, to write OK or K is something that's passive aggressive. Something that I, 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 I think that the OK thing, at least for me, like I'm talking about my subjective opinion, the OK thing for me is, it's not passive aggressive, but it just somehow indicates for me that this person is maybe not willing to talk. The person is maybe in a, in a bad mood or not just, uh, ah, 
Something like a bad mood. You know, it's she and or he is not well off. This is something that indicates that. You know, when there's no smiley, when there's nothing. If it is a K, it is something similar at my point of view. It is not completely the same since it somehow also indicates that the person might be stressed out and it is a very fast way to write OK. But OK, which I mean, you can also write OK, which O, K, A, Y. Yeah, you can. The thing is, OK is not the shortest one because K is the shortest one. So therefore, OK, which with O and K is something in between, you know, something funny, something interesting, something that's not going to indicate that this person is in a hurry. Probably, unless, and this just now also depends on the person you're talking to or you're writing with. Because if you know the person and you know that the person is only using KK or OK or K, then uh, the person is only using that. And therefore you know it, you know. And therefore you're also going to see the patterns. Okay, when a person is stressed out, the person is going to use this and or that. But if you don't know this person, it's going to be a little bit of a uh, problematic thing maybe you're not gonna exactly know what the person is up to, how the person is feeling, and all those things. And uh, by the way, the author is Kate, Katie Weaver. And she confirmed like, yeah, you know, it is something rude to say, okay, it is not that good if you're saying okay, and whatnot. And there is something pretty interesting. I do not know if this is an explanation by her. No, I think it's, I th no, I think it's from her or by her. In case you're wondering where KK came from, came from, there are conflicting theories, but most seem to say that it is a shortened version of the popular 90s game gamer expression KQ, which is K, comma, key, uh, K, E, W, L, which is itself a shortened version of OK, Q, which is OK, and then again, K, E, W, L. Wherever it came from, it does seem to be the most polite form of acknowledgement for the under 40s. And I kind of feel like KK. I've always thought that KK actually comes from OK OK. KK. And not from any fucking game. <laughs> I don't know how you're feeling about that. It would actually be really interesting to, to see what you're thinking about that. So write it down in the comments or hit me up on social media. Um, but I really believe that it's just like OK OK. And I've always used it in OK OK. Like, I don't know, just a citation. Somebody's telling you like, OK, you should be doing this and that in your shirt. OK OK. I'm gonna do that. And at least, at my point of view, it also sounds a little bit nicer than K and OK. It's KK, I'm gonna do this. Okay, okay, I'm gonna do this. And not OK. But at my point of view, like, as I said before, using multiple letters like OK is also a little bit nicer. At least at my point of view, you know, at least as how I'm seeing things. And just coming back kind of full circle, if you're just being like K, all the time and you somehow can not assume that this might be something that a lot of people are going to be pissed by then i don't know i guess you do just have to be a little bit more aware of your surroundings i guess and then see how people are communicating and all those things but the funny thing is that i'm often seeing it with people that are over 40 that i kind of feel like that when i'm riding with them like if it be my parents or if i'm just seeing somebody else riding with somebody that's a little older, then I clearly see that the language is different. And I would actually somehow say that the language can sometimes actually be, I don't want to say rude, but it is just not nice. You know, there's going to be okays. There's going to be just some smileys and that's quite it. Which I, at my point of view, is also not such a nice thing. If you're not kind of replying back in a nice way, some sort of. But it's really funny. It really is funny. And there got to be some studies. There really got to be some studies about that. But yeah. And there is another one. Importantly, using KK instead of OK avoids any suggestions of sarcasm or doubt. Which, by the way, is something that I haven't been thinking about. There are lots of ways of inflecting OK. KK is just pure acknowledgement. Your message is received and it is fast to type. And I would say, yeah. Because if you just are like OK, then it could either be OK. It could also be OK. It could also be OK. Which is like a little bit like, uh, don't piss me off, you motherfucker. There's multiple fucking ways to pronounce OK. But if you're like KK, 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 KK. I don't know, like, of course, you can also think about it in, in different ways. And I just, as I'm thinking about it, I'm having an, a, a younger sister. And I do really wonder if this is actually going to change then in the future. That um, it's actually going to be like, well... 
I'm writing with somebody that's younger than me and they think like that I'm a fucking asshole just because my writing style is different. Or maybe it's going to just circle again, you know, that the writing style is going to be a little bit more rude, quote unquote. Not really, but a little bit more, like, you know what I mean. But yeah, I think that's quite it with this article and therefore I've also just seen an article by Ferrywell. Very well, yeah, very well mind. Um, the link is always is going to be down in the description and it is about passive aggression. And they say passive aggression is expressing sullenness or acting stubborn. Stubborn, at least this is how you can see it and or indicate it. And this is actually how people are going to act when they are actually passively aggressive. And there is a little bit of an example and I kind of feel like that it is a pretty good one. And she says, it's so great that you can just wear anything. And then beneath there is, first one is, recognize signs like sulking and backhanded compliments. Which is like, okay, hey, you know what backhanded compliments are. You know, it's actually a pretty good one. The second part would be, or the second step would be, keep your anger in check, so don't explode. Yeah. The third one, engage in a non-judgmental way, which is really, really, really important in my point of view, but still also very difficult, because what is non-judgmental for this particular person? And the fourth one is allow the person to work through their feelings on their own. And you're seeing there's somebody crying, listening to an album and whatnot. And there is the other girl that's in the first place said it is so great that you can just wear anything in uh, the door. And she's saying nothing because she wants him to, to work on it, which is pretty nice. I like it. An example. For example, a person might repeatedly make excuses to avoid certain people as a way of expressing their dislike or anger towards those individuals. But this just really... No, I didn't have a note there. But it's still... If they have been asked to complete a task at work, for example, they will put it off until the very last second or even turn it in late in order to punish the person who assigned the task. And what I've been thinking about is clearly revenge. If you're passively aggressing, it's just a passive way to just hurt somebody. It's not going to be active, actively aggressive. And I do also have to say that aggression for me isn't the right word to, to explain that and or to talk about that. For me, this is not aggressive. It's just seeking revenge, seeking, I don't know, just hurting the other people or the willingness to hurt somebody else. The causes. There are multiple causes, actually, and it starts with the upbringing. Some suggest that passive-aggressive behavior may stem from being raised in an environment where the direct expression of emotions was discouraged or not allowed. People may feel that they cannot express their, their real feelings more openly, so they may instead find ways to passively channel their anger or frustration. Then situational characteristics. The situation also has an influence on passive aggression behavior. When you are in a situation where this place of aggression are not socially acceptable, such as at work, uh, or at a business or family function, you might be more inclined to respond in a covert way when someone makes you angry. I'm really fucking aggressive. I'm getting fucking fully actively fucking aggressive. <laughs> uh, actually not that funny sometimes, but taking the easy road, being assertive and emotionally open is not always easy when standing up for yourself is difficult or even scary. Passive aggression might seem like an easier way to deal with your emotions without having to confront the source of your anger. Which is actually a pretty good explanation in my point of view. And it, it, at least it would make sense, right? It really would. So how to deal with passive aggressive behavior? The first step is to recognize the signs of such behavior, which is sulking, backhanded compliments, procrastination, withdrawal and refusal to communicate are all signs of passive aggression. Then point out that the other person point out the other person's feeling in a way that is not judgmental yet factual. An example would that be, you seem to be angry at me for asking you to clean your room. And this is something that I've been reading about in another book. It's been like, I don't know, half a year ago or something, but it's been a really, 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 really good book. And the book also said that if you're pointing out feelings for somebody, you're helping this particular person to understand themselves. Because sometimes when you are in rage, you do not actually know that you are in rage. It might seem a little bit kind of crazy or dumb or whatnot, but it is actually a really good way to solve the whole situation, to calm down the whole situation and to letting the, the person also speak. Because if you're then like, you seem to be angry and the person is like, no, I am not angry because of that. I'm angry because of this and that. It opens the person up. You can then understand the person. You know, it is a passive way <laughs> to somehow get information. And if you're like, okay, you seem to be aggressive and 
angry and pissed. And the person is like, well, I am actually only very sad. Then it changes the whole concept. It changes the whole feeling of you and the person because the person understands it and you also understand it. Step back and give the person some time to work through these feelings after you have just talked to the person about their feelings and how they might be feeling. Recognizing your own passive aggressive behavior, which is going to be the last point of today's episode. It is often easy to recognize passive aggressiveness in others, but what if you are the one engaging in these behavioral patterns? Try to take a step back and look at your own behavior with an impartial eye. Do you find yourself sulking when you are unhappy with someone else? Do you avoid people with whom you are upset? Do you ever talk? Do you ever stop talking to people when you are angry at them? Do you put off doing things as a way to punish others? And do you sometimes use sarcasm to avoid engaging in meaningful conversations? If you feel that passive-aggressive behavior is damaging your relationships, there are steps you can take to change how you relate to others. Improve your self-awareness. Passive aggression actions sometimes stem from not having a good understanding of why you are upset or what you are feeling. Because if you know yourself, then you're also able to ditch certain situations you know you're going to get angry by and or you understand why you're angry. And by understanding why you're angry, because somebody said something, because somebody's doing something, you can somehow think like, I am angry because this person is doing something that I do not want this person to be doing. Does this make sense for me to then get angry? Maybe not. And therefore you're maybe going to stop being angry just because it doesn't make any sense by realizing the reality. Give yourself time to make changes. Recognize your own behaviors at first step and then, um, yeah, change it. See your patterns, recognize those things and try to solve them. Practice expressing yourself, understanding your emotions and learning to express your feelings appropriately is an important step towards ending passive aggressive behavior. Conflict is an unavoidable part of life, but knowing how to assert your feelings effectively can result in better resolutions. It's a pretty good one. And with that being said, this is going to be the end of the episode. It's been a pretty cool one, I guess. I do actually have to look up things a little bit more. And it's, it's, I'm going to contribute off of it and you also going to contribute off of it just because I'm going to pick out the most important parts and I'm also going to read the whole thing. So I'm learning, you are learning, it's a win-win, it's cool. But with that being said, I wish you the best health of happiness and also success and I also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy, which basically means that you're just going to be a nice person and then you're also going to be remembered as a nice person. In theory, practically, maybe not. But I have three other questions for you, which is, why are you here? What are you trying to change? And what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, since a lot of companies started out with solving something that really pissed them off before. And yeah, I'm hopefully going to see you the next time as well. Peace out or something. I don't know. I do actually have to think about something like that. But I see you, hopefully.